Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Meta HSC Valorant, sponsored by Optus and Torrens University of Australia. I'm Digital Cast, and of course, it's Reinhardt Coin with me for game two. And now, a best of one this week. It will be on Haven. This time, it will be uh, which two schools was it? Remind me again. Uh, We've Delta got De La Salle College versus mm -hmm. off against Bass High School. So yeah. it's going to be a very interesting matchup. We have seen Riaz Gremory perform immaculately well on selected agents like Phoenix for one in, uh, I think it was like two two weeks running. And mm -hmm. we've also got Issei Hi uh, Hiodori, who has also been playing very uh, formidable as well. Like they've got a very strong team comp. Yeah. Going up against the likes of um, Asian Fried Rice and JC, two, champ two players to highlight on the spot. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how well they converse one another. Like, you know, who has the skill gap coming into this matchup here tonight as game number two over at Meta HSE. Yeah, and you know, looking at the uh, at the leaderboard as well, Delisle College, Reevesby Heights, actually, they're currently number one in uh, on the leaderboard at six wins. Obviously, the uh, uh, Bass High School is at five wins, just one under under. But however, the thing is, one win, you know, sometimes it does separate and make or break a great team from a good one exactly and i'm liking i'm already liking this setup at the moment we can see over on the attackers side they've got a very strong aggressive comp the only thing that's a little bit missed a bit missed out on is that they would have to rely a little bit on the uh, smokes coming out from jet when they secure a side like that is a oh, one man Howie. show versus the rest of them at the moment that's sort of true but, but bear in mind how we on astra as well you do have those uh nebula smokes that don't last as long as say brimstones and they aren't as big as omens but they get the job done Good also rius <laughs> yeah you missed that out he's like <laughs> it was raised for a second there because to me they're both very similar at the moment like i'm looking no. at it it's just like oh okay then all right so that could be that could be a, a raise all very right. interesting right. but okay. i'm still liking it regardless it's looking very strong whereas on the defending side i'm really liking the omen killjoy most of all mm. uh the omen you know i always have mixed feelings about this because in the current meta astra has overtaken omen's role as the primary smoker just just because of the fact that astra's utility kit is much more versatile you can do a gravity well suck as well as a a, a fragile stun afterwards you can do a nova pulse which is flat it stuns enemies and you can also do a nebula and on top of that you can place your smokes down anywhere and your utility it's basically unlimited as long as you have stars left remaining so yeah going back to your point uh della cell they have a really good and basically uh, in meta composition but for bass high school something much more comfort but the rays and rayna versus jet and phoenix that's something I'm, I'm i'm excited to see yeah especially once he hits the runner back it's going to be very oh, yeah. uh, it, it's it's like a nice little recon you know to sort of understand what their front line is when sitting on base when they decide to go for a point uh, you know should they focus here should they focus mm. there all right, they're in this corner. We got to change up our position. And the one thing I love so much coming to this from, uh, I believe it's Dealers. Is it Dealer Cell on the right hand side? I, I Dealer Cell on the attack. Yeah. There we go. Dealer Cell on the attack side is that they always have that one man lagging on the flank to catch out anybody who tries to go for the side here. And straight off the bat, we've gone straight into this. Look at Labs trying to get a few pokes in. It already takes a hit and is forced to heal. Yeah. Thankfully, though, that heal for Sage, it does regen over time, but it's 45 seconds, and that's like a half the round already gone. And Rias, okay, the star player, you, the star Phoenix you mentioned earlier, opens things up, takes down JC. Now, why is that punishing as a first kill? Because that's the smokes for the defenders for a potential retake. They're down a player, the Sage was gone up over towards mid, and instantly repositioned over towards C. This is good, but Rias is going to go for the aggressive push, leading the charge. Yeah, and with that, star smokes um, playing down to the field, they're able to gain some control, gain the vision needed. The spot, the, the scout arrow gives them the ability to try and catch them off guard. All of them are now sitting in garage. They don't have much vision available. They are handicapped at this point. And with their wall up, they are now facing even more trouble. They're pretty much going to get caught out immediately, giving off all the information needed for dealer cells. Will immediately flank them on the side. Good jump though, because they actually you, you spot out the Sage as she has to rotate off. But there's two players already point blank, spraying bullets down range. And Rias escapes with three. That's all down to CBF. 1v2. He can do this now. Rias is very low. CBF just has to win out the engagement, but it will be Issei to finish things off. Okay. All things considered, not having any smokes, it wasn't that bad, but they still lost the pistol round. And now they will probably have to save this as LSL looking to buy up. I gotta say, that was an amazing first round coming out from DLSL. 
able to really cap onto things, take down Omen immediately, sending them back, not only into a 4v5 situation, but also they are missing some smokes, which is really, you know, making it much yep. more easier for them to be able to take the charge. And having Astro alive as well on top of to pop those stars, they're really making good use of the utility on those abilities. And now starting off this next round, oh they don't God. have anything available. And right there, there we go again. Second round, first blood again. Yep, JC, the smoke's once again gone for the defenders. But then again, this is a bit of an eco round, so they can do some damage, ideally, and that's the best thing they can hope for. Although I say that, Ace of Fight Rice is the only person whose hero bought a Spectre, and how he shuts him down ASAP. Okay, Hongo, the last player standing on the B site, as Cheru goes down. Good luck. Last player standing. And this is what's really going to sort of give them this round, is that they decide to go straight in for five Spectres, over probably Spike once planted. two spectres and just others still trying to hit econ with those classic tables. Oh. Okay. You know what? CBF, he did get at least one before he went down. So that's at least a small win because uh, realistically, right, they really weren't going to get anything done with the uh, economy and guns they had. But now Agent Fired Rise off the hero buy in the previous rounds. He's dog poor. He can only buy half armor spectre. Everyone else on his team are rifle pretty much. His name's kind of making me hungry a little bit. Asian fried rice. Oh, just fried rice. Yes, I'm, I haven't eaten lunch today, and I'm beginning to feel a little bit peckish just thinking of it's the name. It's 6 p.m., dude. <laughs> well, I'm a 30-minute difference, but regardless, I'm still hungry. <laughs> you haven't lunch and you haven't had dinner. That's the, uh, that's the duo combo that you don't want coming to this. But hey, look, it doesn't matter. Thankfully, you aren't playing. Although they have changed up the defensive uh, strat a little bit here. CBF instead will be playing over towards mid. The insta wall up, and this time, JC is still alive. Yeah, and I gotta say, it's really risky going all out for th at least three members over on Bass High. You've got, like, CBF, Shiro, and Bongo all hitting the Vandals and the, and the Phantom, mm -hmm. as well as JC really hitting full loadouts in this third round but they haven't had any success so far, so it's taking a big risk, whereas on the other side of the Spectrum, DLSL, oh dear. able to sit with the Econ for that little bit longer. JC got spotted out, but take a look at the Spectrum, can't really wallbang that much. It's SMG after all the silence. Uh, HM Fried Rice, though, it does get revealed. He gets vulnerable as well. Okay, good for one, dismisses after safety. JC trades with them, and JC, not again, man, goes down. No smokes once again for the defenders. HM Fried Rice being radar, you can sell field, but we'll opt to use the Sachel instead. Spike is down, 4v4, and look at this Sage Wall again. Yeah, blocking up some side vision, but there's going to be two more kills going over to Bass High. Now going to catch him off guard. There's the Elder Flame catching a nice kill. The final kill of the round, and the first point leading onto the def on the defense this time, which does mean that we might see a little bit of Ray of Hope coming out from Bass High, because this is a attacker-dominated map. Like, you know, when you're on attack, you have the advantage, but the minute you're on defense, there you go. A little bit more stress is put on your plate. Mm. Uh, that round, it was good that, um, that's how they won it. They lost two rifles, so it's not too bad, but if, it, if, they, if they lost three, then that's a slight issue. But the thing is, they were meant to win that round regardless. It was a bonus buy for, um, uh, De La Salle, and they, as long as they got damage, and which they did, and got the spike down, that's it. Their job is done. Now they are the ones who have the, the full rifles, and plus two ultimates to boot. Rias, once again, the Phoenix, the run it back, things make it hot. You know, and now we're coming into this. I'm liking what we're seeing straight off the bat. The spike now being picked up by Sova. So they're going to try and switch things up. This is what is smart about putting the spike down early when you're not being aggressive. You can give it to literally anybody. If one person gets caught out, that's okay. The spike is in one location. Anyone can pick it up and change up the entire strategy plan. And straight off the bat, I love oh, that no. already fishing for information. But JC gets him off guard with a stinger. And he's going to give them a one-man advantage he's leading to this fourth round. That was actually perfectly timed. Just as uh, Rius turned around, JC strikes with the Stinger, no less. The SNG has been nerfed to hell, but hey, it did damage just then. And plus, you know, they only have one ultimate now. They run it back. The six-man advantage ultimate is gone for De La Salle, but And as well for, for, for the defense, they have that Sage Resurrection available. So now it's the defenders who have the man advantage, sort of. You know, talking about that stinger, I really dislike the gun. It has got the really? worst recoil in the game. Like, I swear, I always have to, like, throw my mouse off my... Off, off my... my was, hang, hang on, hang on. Aquino's just dashed onto the side. Already good for one. A second W cherry on top, but CBF takes him down. But it was a fake all along, and Seaside has been taken for free by De La Salle, But they are still down a player. We should be looking to see them plant the spike in, in towards the back corner and maybe play long for post-plant defense. Spike planted. Well, straight off the bat, they're coming from their own side. They're going to try and catch them off guard behind market. 
they will have to be a little bit careful. There are some bit of sparks no. out there, and there's Issei getting uh, taking down JC immediately. But now he's going to yep. try and even the tides a little bit more. That smoke, it's super telegraphed as well. And plus, when, when, when they hear TP, they know exactly where you are. This retake, it's going sort of poorly. They've used the ultimates. Okay, finally, finally they strike back. And that nade should maybe do some damage. And it doesn't deep fish labs. Okay, things are a little bit close there. But overall, once again, the ultimate advantage and the man, and the man advantage in that round for Bass High. That's what secured them this tie game. Two to two. Seeing Brazer's bomb go off like that in the back line, the splash damage coming out from the secondary explosion really gave them that cutting edge needed to be able to take down mm -hmm. that last member and give them that point. So now we're coming back up. It is a tied round. D La Salle being pressured a little bit because they are on attack. They do have this map advantage, the elements yep. to take things into their favor. The fact that they are losing points on attack will only make things a little bit more stressful for them meeting over into the second half when they hit on defense because defense is the worst kind and now coming into this as well one side's gone sorry we can see that defenders are going straight for full letouts but on the other side De La Salle are sitting on three uh, three sheriffs and two specters they do have the gun disadvantage leading into this but they are going as an entire team and that's good so whatever disadvantage they have they can make up for it with superior numbers Killjoy, however, is on uh, the A side trying to lock it down with Race, but it's Race who has the Showstopper Ultimate. And look, they're all grouped up. One rocket can finish all of them. They hit the Util coming out, and the stars as well. Cheru, this is his time to strike. Well, they're playing it passive. Going to try and make sure they don't catch anybody out. There's Server lagging in the flank as well. Just already on the side for Cheru, hasn't been discovered just yet. He's trying to duel up towards short. He's running out too many players. He misses everything. There's the showstopper gone. Issei opens up. CBF trades back. And Akino gets retribution. The spike to go down. And bear in mind, Dallas out there on an eco. Rhea, sharp shot, takes down Bongo up, up, up over towards heaven. Now, they have smokes, but no ult for the retake this. And now, an extreme man disadvantage. JC, one on five. They know exactly where he is. I'm amazed he managed to survive for that long. But he does take one down before he, he himself goes down. And this is going to turn tides around immaculately because they had massive econ last round. Now they've actually managed to save themselves a little bit of extra creds because they picked up a couple of guns. They scavenged off of the um, the corpses of their victims and they're able to sort of save him for another. So at least they've got another round or two at um, bare minimum to be able to hit full letouts again and keep things on tone. And, you know, they're on attack. They got another point. That's what they need. Keep themselves afloat for a little bit longer. And I got to say, taking on A like that, taking out their biggest competitor, Race, who had that ulti ready, yep. really gave them the opportunity needed to be able to take this around. Now coming through to the next one, it's going to be just as strong, but in this time, the defenders are going back on. Yeah, Asian Fried Rice, he's done that in the past and it didn't work out so well. He tried it again, once again, and gets punished. He was going solo. Oh, JC, did this shoulder get spotted? I'm amazed that he managed to escape unscathed. Okay, now they know exactly where he is, but with only a classic versus a running back Phoenix with a rifle, Oh dear, <laughs> he's looking the wrong way as well, but Rias taking his time and he can't actually get this kill as JC manages to duck himself into the corner, but how he's there down, to get the kill perhaps, indeed JC goes down, but look, the defenders, they're putting up a fight. Georgia Lockdown is now deployed and this, this should force the attackers at least off sea long for the time being as a spike still down over, over in garage. One enemy remaining. Oh, oh there we go. One taken off the board, defenders do have this, Bass High have the opportunity to try and claim it, so now with that ulti down, could work a little bit more favorably for Howie if he gets those hits, but CDF is going to put him on a pedestal. Yeah, Howie, though, he has no stars to play with. He does have the Cosmic Divide Ultimate, but one on two, I don't really know if it's the best choice to use it. Pass up the shoulder of CBF. But no, CBF just repositioned in the nick of time. Now it's a 2v1, and they are playing the buddy system. Howie, no armor. He has to land a clean head to stuff things off, and walks right Ooh. into the crosshairs of CBF. Triple for the Sage. And now, wow, another even, even game, 3-3. Yeah, CBF showing how showing us he's had his cup of coffee, he's had his Red Bull, his monster, his rock star, whatever you whatever he whatever he fancies on his play, and he's really showing us how on flick he is with those reaction timings. Placing sentry. It is just believe, like it is I can't believe you said on fleek. I can't believe you he actually said on fleek. That has dropped out of like your mom trends for a long time. But hey, it's good to hear it back. Hey, always gotta surprise the people somehow. All right, okay, now, it's a bit of an even bar here. Rias, that's a sharp shot to get the initial uh, frag onto Asian Fried Rice, who now has they managed to die as the first player two rounds back-to-back -back now. You don't want to lose the Reyna Util this early on. 
No, and just looking at the positioning. I love this. They're both, like, all of DLSL focusing it. on A. Whereas in the other side of Spectrum, they're a little bit split, but they are beginning to converge on top of one another. There's the smoke going out to try and hold out long, but it's not going to be great because Astra has already popped her ulti as well to sort of blind things oh, out a little bit further. Them. Okay, Shichiro, a bit bold, and oh, didn't do any damage off of the ultimate. Instead, he takes a shot dart, scratching him briefly. Spike goes down, and the defenders, they bled two players, no smokes, no flashes. They're going to have to basically shoot their way out of this. If anything, I would recommend them to save because getting back onto the site now with a post line this heavy, it's going to be next to impossible. Good start though. Rios gets it taken down. Good nice movement tech blasts away. And they are taking down the players. Aquino's by himself under hell. But no, he's just a tad sharper. Takes down CBF as retribution for his, uh, the previous round. Yeah, been just like that. Pick up a couple guns here and there. All of everybody sitting on at least two, sorry, one person, Gre Riaz Gramery, sitting on 2,000 creds, has a full loadout. Everyone else, however, sitting above him, which is really favorable for the likes of DLSL. The other side of the spectrum, however, things are beginning to become a little bit more individual. We're seeing Shiru on that raise, sitting with just a ghost this round, whereas at least three members have decided to go for full loadouts. That is going to be a mismatch comp mm. and a damage disadvantage if they're not careful. And once again, rinse and repeat, we're seeing that spike sitting in the back line, waiting for them to change around. And first blood going over to Asian Fried Rice this time with a nice you headshot through the wall. Kill my allies. Yeah, it's a, it's a good start. But uh, hey, look, the res was there and they managed to bring Aquino back. So numbers are still even, but they managed to burn at least one Sage ulti really early in the round. So it wasn't that crucial of a, of a time, I suppose. But once again, going back to your earlier point, it's a very scrappy buy for Bass High, and they really have to make this work and playing trades because they don't want to be bleeding players when you already have a gun disadvantage. Rius, man, that was close. He nearly took down Cherry's head. But the defense is rotated over to C4 to, to, to be precise. It does seem to be a C pinch after all. But things maybe getting a little bit dicey as Issei comes down Hunter's Fury, does damage. A kill will be ideal here. As oh. his teammates forced on the sides. Fried Rice using Rainer to perfection. Bongo, sharp flip. They spot out Aquino in the corner. One for one trade. All down to Issei now. The lone sober. He's burned his ultimate. He's burned his util. His teammates are gone. 1v4. Yeah, he should. Honestly, he should just sit back on this one. Let them take it out. Let the time run down because he's just gonna. Get, he's just gonna hand over even more advantages. Over there. But there we go. That's oh, a good oh, 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 spray down and DTB and JC line up for him. Yeah, Suddenly, yeah, this one v four became a one v two, and things are really doable. Ricardo comes through and he gets popped into this. So he knows there's at least one player on site. Nice shot, shot, shot. To, to clear close and to clear back site, but time is running short. Ten seconds. At this rate, he has to go for the kill. The plant is going to be with the possible. Crush the site. Kill. To a turret spot now. One v one. But he has time. Hit the planet now. Four seconds. He's gonna make it. He's done nearly the impossible. One on one. Killjoy biding her time. Bongo over towards garage and Issei probably smells blood. He gets to get the flick and indeed he does. Quadra for Issei. Monstrous clutch. Della Cell. What a play. That has to be the play of the game right there. Last man alive takes out everybody and plants the spike with half a second to spare. Now that is cutting it close to the very edge of that round, and he's just making things even more positive for the likes of DLSL. They're now sitting on another favorite point. Yep. Again, we've only got one, two, three, four rounds left before we hit the halfway and the switch over. Game away. This is only just a prediction, but I'm feeling I'm feeling hopeful for DLSL just based on these plays. Like first we saw CBF, now we're seeing the other side of the spectrum it's, with these days. JC, you know he got picked up at first again this round. They have the Sage Reds, thankfully this time to bring him back from the dead. Maybe they're, they're choosing not to use it as they are on a bit of an eco, so it's sort of wasted. But once again, he kind of wants to lose smokes as, as the first player. Cheru, lone player on time to hold things down, just whips the bullet, and then just shoots. And Della Cell, this swarm onto the A side easily. Damage is the best thing that uh, Bass High can hope for now. Spike planted. CBF can pull off another round and another reversal. This could work well, but no, there she goes. The rest of the team now sitting forced standing. to sit back a bit. This is not looking favorable. They may they should just give this round over. The spike is down. They're hitting, they don't exactly have good econ going. They can't risk losing another gun, but this is gonna be it. Bongo's gonna get taken out from the flight. Yeah, but um, they did. He did do some damage. He, he took down two players. I think that's okay for being on an eco. Oh, but now we are nearing uh, the end of the first half. The ultimate as well. I want to point out, Is Rias. This is his second runner back in the first half, which is, 
you know, not the best. If you can get three in the first half, that's that's really ideal. Two's average. But Aquino as well, the Blades, he hasn't had to pop that just yet. They've never been in the situation, at least economy-wise, in which he has been forced to use the ultimates. But in this in the saying for um Bass High, once again, a bit of a scrappy buy. Trying to juggle between either a rifle or a spectre there for Chiro. Just go for the for the big gun. Go hard or go home. They have the ultimate to play with. This go. round has to be theirs. Rius, run it back, already popped. It's a dash on the B side. Exactly, and you're going straight into the point. They're going to be focusing B quite hardcore, but this is where things can get disastrous for them. Oh no, JC should have secured that kill. Rias, he walked through a one-way smoke as well of his own teammates. Defenders, though, they managed to bring things back just briefly. Three on three, and Agent Fried Rise catches Howie, levitating midair as Labs gets the insta trade back. Spike is down, Bongo sort of isolates Labs, but the toss was a bit too slow. 59 HP now, two shots from death. Watch out, Thug! The, the shoulder, but then eats the shock that 14 HP. He's safe. All he has to do is hold Bongo. This is a tough task. He had formidable plays. He had the strategy. He had the mindset. He knew exactly where they were. The only thing that didn't work out is that he just didn't have enough health to be able to soak up some more damage. Yeah, that and the, and the fact that when you are in a 1v2 and a tactical shooter, you really do have to take the initiative and go aggressive. Get get that initial kill and make it a one-on-one. -on -one. Because the thing is, the, those last three players there, they were essentially isolated from each other. You had CBF over towards... Uh, no, it was CBF, sorry. Uh, Labs over towards mid and Issei over towards uh, C-Link. So they really couldn't crossfire or back each other up. And that's why Issei was hiding in the corner there to make sure that Bongo doesn't take him down. Overall, well played. They played the spike and it worked out fantastically. This time though, De La Salle looking to go for a strong A rush, leaving the Phoenix on the lurk. Yeah, but that can, but that always works out for De La Salle as well. The person who goes for the flank, who sits on the side, always manages to catch out You know, their, their backside, their flank, their weakest points. Because we did see as well that um, I think in the last round, a couple of people did get taken out from not seeing where they are. They got headshot like we saw from Astro. Nice. But Bongo with the frenzy takes down one, but Labs the sharp flick. Cherry couldn't even get more than two bullets off. This is a Nancy kill once again, and the defenders. This was just rushing onto the side, but look at how patient actually that was our arm. They're leaving only one player on site to plant the spike. And now JC, second time the save slow, gets revealed as well. He will go down. The defenders bleeding out again. I was close for CBF. He's vulnerable and he walks into that molly. He's gonna be burned into a crisp real fast. Oh, I wonder how long this barbecue's gonna last. So there we go, trade on CBF, gets a nice kill with the Spectra. But straight from there, they do have the res available, but it's down to Oh! That was close. Yeah, Agent Fried Rice, that... He almost made it up. A, a 1v1, Last but unfortunately, you have to land switch. a headshot with the Spectre. And plus, the thing about the Spectre is, when you're at when you are at close ranges, you don't actually have to sit still and shoot because, as an SMG, you already have a run and gun advantage. Just run, be free, and hope that things work out in your favor. Now, Reinhardt, I hate to say this, we are nearing the end of the first half, and for Delacell, it's looking to be a nine to three scoreline. That's convincing. Well, I did, I did say, I did say this is attack prone. They do really know how to play well on this map, and they did lose out three rounds, but they recovered quite strongly. And they're going to try and keep this element on their side for as long as possible. Because as soon as they hit defense, they need to be, they need to be a little bit more cautious because they don't have oh. the element, like the element of the map. And look at this, Issei is going to go for the first kill. Does get one and the spray down. JC walks right into it. The trade just wasn't there. They hadn't, they didn't have much intel. And now, dearie me, this, the phantom at those distances is so clutch. Though so Bongo does manage to hold down this A side for a little bit longer, but it's not uh, long before he goes down himself. There is a flank coming out from Rainer, but the footsteps is too loud. It's Issei. He is it from a mild, mild way. One of one over towards Long, and there's only one other defender over towards Heaven, the Owl Drone. But you know exactly where the Rainer is. So I'm concerned for Issei. Okay, I'm not concerned at all. He just holds down the left mouse button. Agent Five Rise walks, runs the bullets. Cheru, last round of the half, 1v4. Gets caught out on the reload, and Rias, Phoenix aggression, man. What else can I say on the attack? It goes hand in hand. Switching Historically, sides. getting caught out on the reload is one of the most tilting things that could ever happen to you in this game. Mm -hmm. Next to accidentally getting headshot of three, you know, 360 no scope or anything like that. But look at that. They managed to win nine out of 12 rounds in the first half. Now moving over to the defense, they could. First bloods, this could look very favorable and a very massive uh, victory tonight yeah. for De La Salle because he's had at least four to five first bloods so far tonight, mm. and this is only this is historical too. This is historical for the player, and the rest of his team are really holding up to play well. Like we can see that uh, Issei 
has managed to you know play off really well in the last couple of rounds, catching people off on the fly. Labs is also holding up just as nicely. Aquino, however, does need to like the only thing that's unfortunate is that he hasn't been forced to use his blades yet, which is his secret weapon because you know they do 50 damage minimum. He did save it into the into the, into the second half, I suppose. But Labs, the solo sage on site, gets taken down rather easily. So, Della Cell, you're down a player, but this retake is still very much doable. It's a pistol round, you might as well go for it. But you have a limited util to play with. Arias, look at this flank. He's made his way all the way up long. This is sneaky positioning. Bongo doesn't quite spot him, I think, as JC goes down. Arias, this is easy! He's in the gravity well of his own teammate, of all things. He gets vulnerable. Now he's in a risky position. He gets taken down by Age of Fighters. Age of Fighters 1v3, gets one, has a reload. The overheal is active, though. His spam shots and take down this jet, but he's losing health as we speak. Recon out to come through. Oh, what is going on? Age of Fight Rise, he can't be whipping like that, man. Akino cleans up with the triple, just as you were saying, Akino was having a quiet game. He's, he's picking up the scoreboard a little bit, giving his team a little bit more stability. So far, everyone's sitting in a nice positive KDA for all of DLSL. Same on the other side from Bass High. Although it is looking a little bit more scarce on the bottom half of their of their, mm. uh, their scoreboard. But nonetheless, they are still making good plays where they possibly can. JC does need to pick up his game, however, if he wants if they want to try and bring this back in the second half, because they have the element of the map. They can catch things on. They just need to be a little bit more cautious with their surroundings. Because on A, they're exposed by at least four forms of entrance. And that could be really unfavorable if they don't try and, you know, control at least two of them. You know, I'll talk about the Pithipus a, a little bit later, as we can see a force by some from, uh, from uh, Oh, that's high. They have to take the site and the stage low orb. It's just buying so much time. One for one trade, and Akina just spamming through this one, trying to do some more damage. Warm for post plants as the spike goes down. Yeah, but just sitting up here, they've got the, they've got control. They have a little bit of vision, but they can get caught out. As we can see, the it's on the flank again too. as well. But this time, the, okay, uh, the, the kill your util, it's not being used effectively. I'll, I'll explain that in just a moment. But, but now, Rias, he's finally got a strike from over towards Long. That's the easy one, easy two. He spots out front, right to the corner. Classic from long distance, right click. Cheru, 1v3 now. He needs a nade to play this as, oh dear, only the blue bot was available and gets taken down by Tino. Double digits, 11 rounds now for Della Cell. Now, I wanted to say, the kill your util, why I don't think it was being used effectively was because you're on the attack, right? And you actually have a more defensive sentinel in the form of Killjoy. Place your turret, say, either towards a long and use it to get intel in case someone is on the early flank. Because if you have it watching heaven or, say, uh, defender spawn, it's sort of pointless because all your players are on site regardless. So it should be actually the other way around uh, right now for Della Cell, as it don't have any strong, like, uh, sentinel defenders like Cypher or Killjoy to lock down sites and get early intel. Instead, they have to be proactive, they have to be aggressive, and that's exactly what they've been doing with, uh, Rias at the very least, on the flanks. Well, looking for- looking forward into this, they do have the gun advantage coming in- I'm um, sorry, the Dealer Cell do have the gun advantage, they have the stronger defense. They're really showing a strong, um, defensive positioning as well, because- they are actually winning on what is normally considered a disadvantage um, base position. And the rest of Bass need to try and recover from this. And there's Bongo taken out immediately. They're getting isolated into one of these one-on-ones and uh, Dallas are punching oh. them heavily. Look, this three-man stack, and that's how confident they are. They throw body at them. Well, wow, match point already. Yeah, they really pushed them into a corner this time. First, they had an advantage going into the garage. Then they got caught out and Dallas Al just Pretty much like, you know, they hunted them. They took mm. down the whole pack one by one, and it was just left and right. They had the flank to worry about. They had their front line to worry about. Yep. There was nothing they could do to hold themselves out. They need to try and sort of play the copycat, what Dealer 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 Sal did in the first round, where they sort of fished for information, saw what was being focused more, what the what defensive positions were stronger on which points, and mm. go for the weakest. But so far, it's yet to be it's yet to be seen. What I am liking though is Asian Fried Rice is playing on the flank, but is caught out immediately by the blinds up against that window. And look at that straight off the way. Oh. Riaz and Aquino now already charging around for the flank. Riaz wants to get on the flank, but he's just checking the corners and his timing, this time the timing doesn't work in his favor. As a defenders, they are falling one by one. And now we are seeing signs of life. They have a pulse, but no, they caught out with the, they caught out with the util. How he sprays two players See. down. Suddenly just three v two turns a one of one. As Labs lands defenders the headshot, win. Asian Fight Rice almost had a moment there, but he will go down. That was a bullshit. That was just an absolute clean sweep. 
they had they were put on a pedestal a little bit for the first six rounds then they completely took it back and won the remaining seven it's 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 astronomical like we've seen this time and time again from dealers our college should not be surprised to see it once again and yeah. go up against the likes of bass high bass high did show up a good performance but that was when they had good control the minute they lost that the minute they lost that sixth round and like the uh, sorry the seventh round and they gave it back over to uh, dealer south college mm. it was just lights out they knew exactly what to do they knew how to play around them yep they had the strategy they had the gameplay they had they had the um, oh. I'm going to say it again. They had the on fleek response time needed to be able to catch them out, especially Issei early on when he managed to actually turn the tides of a single round from one versus yep. four to he planted the spike within half a second mm. remaining and he clean sweeped the rest of the team. It is just, it's un, it's unheard of. It's unseen. Like a it, very it's a, nice it's a crazy match play. Good play. Yeah. Exactly. And Issei, obviously he was the hero for that for, uh, for the first half, I would, I would say, earlier on as it gave his team a morale boost. But overall, right, it's just the difference in how these teams play. This is the, the first seed versus what, like the, I don't, I don't know, man. Let's have a little read again. The third seed. The, it's only a one a one win score separating these two. And it just shows the difference of how, you know, of the skill gap, right? So you have one team that basically on the attack side plays a slow default. They gather intel. They have a spike down over towards uh, attacker spawn-ish as they, as they get some picks. Work out where the attack, uh, the defenders are before they strike. Meanwhile, you flip it over to uh, Bass. When they were on the attack, they didn't really play a default, especially um, later on. But then again, they lost the pistol round. So they couldn't really buy up with a, a strong um buy with rifles and it really did impact them a little bit but they did when they tried to go for the uh, the a side takes once again that was just a one trick pony and it got exposed really early as the mvp of this game it will be reus gremory and he being proactive on defense just going for the flank early on and punishing bass high school for not using their util effectively finding that weakness delivering an even easier uh win i would say for dallas l well, let's also not forget the amount of first bloods he managed to uh, manage to claim in the oh. first half of that of the first half of tonight's game too. Like that was just amazing. Straight off the bat, gets the first blood. Next couple of rounds, gets the first blood here and there. He didn't exactly hit as many runner backs as you uh, mentioned in that first half. You know, he didn't exactly get to hit three runner backs, but still, nonetheless, with Ise being able to pick up that remain, you know, that missing link really helped the team out greatly and sort of forced him into like you know that nice aggressive lead that they took after that sixth round yeah and you know you did actually say really early on that rias he, he has been a consistent performer i just want to point out actually last week i think there was a game in which he wasn't quite feeling himself so it didn't quite frag out as hard but then again that's the thing about de la salle their lineup as a whole whenever one player is having a cold day anyone everyone all the other players can step up and tonight I would say it's a, it's a pretty solid team game. Everyone, you know, obviously went positive. Everyone hit double digits. Ise had a huge moment there. Rias just being unpunished and running around so freely, getting those kills. Labs for support. Aikino clearing space for his team. And earlier on, I think there was a round in which he managed to fake an A, an a push all by himself. Even got a kill out of it and baited all the defenders off of the other sides of the map. Howie, he's just a smoke guy with uh, his Astro Util to support his team. Overall, nice circle of life. And that's the story exactly and i think it's time we sent our viewers off to uh, a little intermission break while we get ourselves ready because we are getting a little bit into no wait sorry we have a little bit of time before we hit the final game here tonight over at meta hsc mm. i gotta say that was a very aggressive for, uh, second round tonight in my first cast and i gotta say i'm feeling a little bit overheated while wearing this jacket well, look, uh, it's getting pretty cold here in Australia, so it's a good thing you have a jacket on. Well, guys, we will be going for a short breather as the next game at 7 p.m. will be Melbourne High School versus Beau Marie's Secondary College. Once again, this will be the uh, my last shift for this week. I'm Digital Cast. Of course, joining me is Reinhardt Coin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Meta HSC Valorant, sponsored by Optus and Torrance University of Australia.